Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Murli Balcha. I'm the CTO of uh, Trilio Data. So our product is called Trilio Vault. So we'll discuss um, how Trilio Vault can be leveraged as an enabler for the hybrid cloud. Um, so let's start with um, you know, what uh, OpenStack deployments typically at our customer sites, right? So um, most of the time, uh, our cu the customers deploy multiple versions of the OpenStack because that's, that's how the journey goes with OpenStack. They may have Juno or Kilo or Liberty in a production, and then they want to upgrade to a new uh, version of the OpenStack. So that they set up a new OpenStack version, they test it out, and then gradually do a rolling upgrade or gradually fail over the workloads onto the new, um, new OpenStack. So this is the journey of the OpenStack. This is how you deploy and manage the OpenStack. So it, it, when we talk about the hybrid cloud, like that hybrid cloud concept or the challenge hits home much closer than you know, in a private, private cloud or a public cloud. So the challenge here exists the same way as like, you know, how we basically tie the private cloud or public, uh, or, or, uh, public cloud, right? So in this case, um, you know, we should have the ability to basically take a workload that is running on Kilo-based uh, OpenStack and then restore it to the uh, Newton-based uh, workload, uh, Newton-based OpenStack. So that is the journey goes on. So um, we'll talk about like how we can leverage the Trilio Vault to enable this kind of use case. And uh, maybe in the future, like we'll also, uh, we are also thinking about how we can uh, integrate uh, AWS or other public clouds. Um, so the common question that customers ask is, obviously, how do I m uh, migrate my workloads that are running on my older version of the OpenStack to a newer, newer version? Um, or they have two different OpenStacks that are set up at two different geolocations. And how do they fail over, uh, or how do you recover a workload that is running in one, one site to a different site? Or how do you fail over a complete tenant from one cloud to a different cloud? So the under, underpinnings is essentially they are looking for a workload migration between the clouds, whether it's a, you know same OpenStack clouds are between two different kinds of OpenStack clouds, right? different, cloud, different kinds of clouds. So when we step back and say like what, um, essentially what typical workload is within the open, uh, with, uh, a workload. A workload can be multi-VM. So multiple VMs, uh, they have some network connectivity and for each of these instance, you apply some security groups um, and you have some persistent storage attached to this one, right? So this is typically a definition of workload. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> So this is the typical de definition of the workload. And then, um, you know, you should be able to capture this workload, and then uh, you should have the ability to basically, uh, you know, move, move, the, move the workload between any cloud in your, in your, in your deployment, right? Um, so they, they want to do it for various purposes, right? It could be a DR scenario, or it could be test of purposes, or it could be some archiving or it could be some other, some, other, some other use case that they want to release as part of their application life cycle. Um, and, and typically they want to use the cloud storage that is accessible for all the clouds um, within, the, within their deployment. Now, if, if it is an open stack or even between two different clouds, they should be able to recreate the workload on the, on the target cloud, right? Uh, for example, if they were to do it on AWS from open stack to AWS or vice versa, so they need to reconstruct all the all the resource type that they captured in that in that backup, and then recreate that to the AWS. So they need to do, they should be able to do the translation from uh, OpenStack resource types to AWS resource types, and then recreate that workload on, onto the OpenStack cloud, uh, onto the onto the target cloud. So um, how do we accomplish all those things? So briefly, um, what is Trilio? Trilio is is a data production for your OpenStack. So just like um, any other service like Nova or the compute service uh, or the network service, um, Trilio is a add-on service into the OpenStack. So we have this, it has its own mind, sorry. Um, so uh, it, it, it comes with a Python, Python wrapper uh, for the CLI and then it has the uh, ground up, we built a RESTful API and then we registered, to, we registered, we register to the Keystone, 
Um, so it appears as in the in the Horizon dashboard, we we surface a tab called backups, and it's completely multi tenant driven. Okay. Now, what do we do as part of the uh, data production? So unlike other data production, data production or the backup uh, solutions, we capture the entire uh, blueprint of your application, right? Including the VM images, including the VM images, the network settings, um, and uh, and the sender volumes, uh, uh, everything that goes with your workload definition. And then. Our capture is also very efficient. The first time we capture the full backup of your entire application environment, and then subsequently we only capture the incrementals. Um, and we are we are we are forever incremental. So once you capture the full uh, um, you know full backup of uh, of that one at the P P zero, uh, we only capture the incrementals uh, from uh, uh, going forward. So. How do we capture our backup images? Our backup images are captured as uh, QCOT images. So you guys know, like you know, most of the for the KVM QCOT is the VM image format. So all our backup images are uh, captured in QCOT images for various reasons. One is QCOT is space efficient. So anytime you have zeros in your backup images, discards those things and ef efficiently uh, stores the backup images in a in a storage efficient way. And the other one is like incremental. So the snapshots can be represented within the QCOT as an overlay file. So we basically build this chain of um, uh, base image and then the incrementals. So the, the good thing about this one is every incremental has, uh, is an overlay file to the previous backup. So all our backup images are fully formed, so I can access any point in time uh, without moving the data. So for example, if I want to restore a single file from my backup image, I, I should be able to do that. Um, so our, our backup capture is also is very very efficient and also back, and also the restore uh, process is also very efficient. So we support um, various backup targets. We support the NFS and we support the Swift natively, and then we support the uh, Ceph object store, and we are working on adding uh, S3 as a as a potential uh, backup target for the uh, for our for our uh, data production service. Now. So for the demo, what I did was um, we have two OpenStack uh, um, clouds. One is the production cloud, and then the other one is the DR cloud. And I configured OpenStack Swift as a backup target. So all the backups are stored on the, op on the, on the Swift object, uh, both the, the full as well as the incrementals. So we, what, what I'm going to do is um, I'm, going to I'm going to import um, the entire entire backup image, like including all the point in times, into the new cloud, and then restore it uh, to the new cloud um, with just a, with just a click of a button. Okay, so let me let me start the demo. So in this case, um, we are creating a backup job. And uh, this backup job includes at least five VMs in there. So we have various instances here. And then the backup tab there, we go and create a backup, a backup job with uh, five VMs. So each of these VMs are different flavors are different uh, configurations. Some of them has uh, booting from the center volume. Some of them um, are, are booting from, from the uh, ephemeral storage. Um, they have different kinds of uh, network settings, and then the security groups assigned to that one. So every time we capture, we capture the entire application blueprint. So. The backup store includes not only the data, but also all the metadata that goes with that, with that uh, workload. Now, I'm going to uh, look at, show you like how all the objects are stored on the, on the Swift storage. So 
So this is the Swift storage. Essentially, we, use, we efficiently use the Swift storage to store our backup images. Um, so from the exploring just the Swift storage, it doesn't make any sense because we split uh, the objects into, into smaller chunks um, to efficiently manage uh, the backup store. Okay, now, so at this point, what we have is we have a five VM workload, right? That's um, that that is saved uh, saved on the Swift. Um, the, now the next thing is like user, we we want to transfer this um, the workload onto a second cloud and then restore it. So for that, um, we run a, a CLI command. And the CLI command essentially takes the backup image that is on the Swift and then uh, reassigns that to the new cloud with a, for a new tenant, right? First, is dis first, it discovers all the backup jobs that are there on the on the on the backup store. In this case, it's Swift, and then we run the command to transfer that to ownership of that backup image from the from the tenant one on the cloud one to uh, tenant two on the cloud two. So now, now the now the backup that is on the Swift that belongs to Cloud One Tenant One, it's uh, successfully transferred to Tenant Two here uh, on Cloud Two, and let's log into the Tenant Two on the on the different cloud on the on the second cloud. Now you go to the backup tabs. So you see that backup that is imported into this cloud, and it has the full history of uh, the backup that was done on the on the Cloud Cloud One. Now. We go to the uh, restore operation, and then here we need to map um, the resources that we captured on the backup to the target side. It may have a different network type, or it may have a different volume type. Um, so once you basically, you know, map all the resources that that were that were captured during the backup to the target uh, cloud, and just say restore, and it's going to orchestrate the whole thing and restores all the volumes, all the VMs, all the networking, all the IP addresses. So at the end of the operation, you have your entire application up and running on a, on a different cloud. OK. So you have, you have the entire, entire, so entire, uh, uh, entire workload restored onto the different cloud. So, this is not a simple migration tool. This is think about this as, as a way to realize your hybrid cloud. So you have multiple clouds um, in your environment, uh, and then you have different workloads. You are using one uh, object store. For example, here it's a Swift, and that's that is your backup store, or what, that is that is where you are basically uh, persisting all your backup stores. And then you have the flexibility to take any uh, any point in time and restore it to a different cloud. It could be for DR purposes. It could be for test dev purposes. It could be for other purposes, right? Um, so this is think about our solution as an enabler for the hybrid cloud for your um, in your deployments. So that's all I got. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>